Previously on KOE. All right. I broke the my nose. A new morning's upon us. We've got the bikes on the trailer still from last night. Actually, you can see how cold it is. This is all ice. I left you out here to freeze, babies. That's literal ice, man. But best time is any to start breaking down. We're going to start getting things set and ready to be repaired. Ordered a few things last night. This just looks so crazy. All right, so let's enjoy some of the sun. Let me pull this stuff off real quick. Let's get down to business, yo. I've got extra clip on bars. The brakes, because the bike flipped over, introduced air into the system. So the brakes do work. They're just soft and spongy and they need to be bled. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Other than that, it's all pretty much straightforward. Just your typical track damage. I know to like the regular street rider, it's a, oh my God, it's destroyed moment. It's not really. The slider didn't even take any damage. I think it took a harder hit when Jalen fell because he fell straight to concrete on it. I was already at a low lean angle and when I fell, it was just like a soft lay down and then it got into the grass and it took the rotation. So uh, everything seems to be like really good. We are okay. Let's start breaking it on down. Aye, great way to start off the morning. Got it all torn down, essentially ready to be assembled. Only thing I got to put on is that clip on. That's no big deal. Two minutes at best. So this front fairing stay is quite twisted. And also uh, you can see right there, the fairing stay mount on the frame is a little twisted, but that's really no big deal. I'm gonna leave this on there so that I can put some heat on everything and then crank it back the other way. We should be able to straighten that up tried and true, like in no time. Fairing stays on the way, rear sets are on the way, plastics are on the way. Headlight is already beat to death and I had already noticed this. They just had it hung up on zip ties and shit like that. Instead of me going full race bike, full track bike, I'm just gonna use these headlights because they do work. Obviously we've seen them work. When I do need lights, we'll plug them up and we'll make them work. I have to take the headlights out, get all of that debris and shit out of there. And other than that, everything's good to go. So the, the bike did okay. It flipped, it did flip, but it did okay. The fairings, this is the low sided side. The fairings are actually in still good condition. I might put them up on the R3 owners group see if anybody needs something if somebody low sided they're a good replacement for them. so i do smell breakfast it is like seven something in the morning <laughs> i decided to get out and get an early start we got that done now it's time to go in have some breakfast and, and enjoy the rest of my day you thought <laughs> all right y'all so it is sunday it is the day after the incident it is currently 207 and i've been in the house almost all day so we take a look and we go ahead and come back here. Would you like to explain what you had to adjust and put back on and do all that? You remember our break, that lever was adjusting all the way out. Yeah. So that's the first time we really pushed it that hard. And with me being mad fucking heavy versus you, you might not need to adjust. But for this, I took the R1 Brembo radial and put the ASV lever because you know how easy this is to adjust. Yeah. So way easier for track use. New clip on, everything's adjusted, all of that's on. Straightened out this, the fairing stay mount that has always been bent. It was bent by the previous dude that crashed. There's the old twisted fairing stay. Um, took all the plastics off, gonna reuse all the grommets. So the plastics that we have, I'm gonna take all the hardware out to put on the new plastics clean it up and we're back on the road now could we have raced today yeah could have raced like this do i want to race like this absolutely not so <sighs> we need new tires that's going on i changed the brakes i'm going to change to some more aggressive brake pads and since these forks don't have any adjustment which could compensate for all those different things that change we're gonna pull these caps off change the fluid and the springs in here because the front's just super soft and we're gonna change that so that's it really and then a new color on the bike new new graphics new fairing package and that'll be that 
so did I get hurt nope I had my gear on have my brand new helmet on held my head up as I slid and got to tumbling so I didn't want to fuck my helmet up but uh, that's the cool part about learning on these on the car track because you're going fast enough to really hurt yourself in the street but on the track uh, it's fine I was at the edge of the track went down was instantly in the grass no big deal so other than disappointment ain't nothing else it's a good day sunny as hell i done got everything done on the bike now i can put the bike up clean it and go play video games and i ain't in nobody hospital and shit all in all uh lesson learned definitely but you know stuff happens oh the other part we've always talked about it i hit the pegs on the ground that's the other part that lifted the bike up so all things that i knew was gonna we I knew the front front end was gonna load sooner or later and I knew that I was gonna hit the pegs again and I did. This time it had the results that we knew was gonna come so it happens. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. So yeah like you said all new stuff's coming on but besides that everything's straight. So that's all that matters so yep. We're good to go. Yep yep and that's why we never changed the fairings when we got it. Because the fairings have always been, and nothing really happened to the fairings. Yeah. Man, dude, feel these brakes. All right, so with that being said, I just want to take it out, um, show you what he was up to since he don't always bring, be bringing the camera anywhere. And I know. I got to be the secondary terrible. cameraman, so. Terrible on YouTube. It's all good. But, so yeah, this is what our Sunday is looking like. After this, like you said, going to go in the house, spend time, play video games, and chill for the rest of our Sunday. So, anything you got to say? It is what it is. <laughs> All right, let me grab my big ass juice. Okay, so most of the cleaning and pulling off broken parts is all done. Spikes clean, gone through everything. Made sure I went through the air box, made sure no filth, no mess, no dirt, no dander. Gotten that thing. We're good to go. That's clean as board of health. Rebled the brakes. I did it about three, four times. It's really simple because there's only one caliper, so there's only really one route that the air bubble can take. So I just wanted to make sure that since this has been sitting around for a while, there wasn't like any air trapped in that. I even just changed pads again just for the hell of it. Um, But bike is really clean waiting on the fairings fairings should be here in a couple days fairing station should probably be here by the end of the week once that's done and i mount up the bracket and put the speedometer back on i'll be able to see how straight that is that's the only thing i'm wondering about i think i got it pretty good eyeballing it um maybe i could put a level or a measure on it and see how like really true that is but uh once that's done all the fairings will be back on and i'm also changing the seat out now i do have a pad somewhere it might be in the back of the truck but I have a 20 mil styrofoam pad that was gonna go on top of this because of the crash. F it, we bought everything new. There's a Norton's Motorsports Superbike seat that goes on here. It's a fiberglass hole. It's a lot taller than this seat. It actually goes up to this contour portion of the tank. So it sits a little bit higher. And then you use 18 millimeter, 20 millimeter styrofoam padding to go on top of that. Now what that's gonna do is it allows you to sit up higher. And for bigger, taller people, you get in the tuck position a little bit easier. It's gonna look really dope. The new fairings, I've always wanted this fairing color i allowed jalen to choose the fairing color and i went with it because i've always wanted a bike this color matter of fact i wanted this bike that color but this super grew on me and i love the red on this so this bike will now be the color that i actually really wanted i mean literally everything has been cleaned this bike's ready to roll. And this is really my first time busting down this bike like this. It's always good to be able to go through the bike and get an intimate touching session on it so that I know everything about it, where everything goes. I mean, like this bracket right here could possibly not be in the proper position, but I know for facts that this one wasn't. This one was so bent, I just put that back in position. All the bracketry uh, should be in the right area and the fairing should fit perfectly now. So we essentially wrecked this bike two and a half days ago and the first key part is now here. 
Let's get this fairing stay on. We'll mount the gauges and we'll see how straight this frame is because that's the actual true part to the testament of how clean this bike is gonna be, making sure it's all straight. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And that's looking pretty good. That's looking just about 100% straight. I can't really tell until the fairings get on. I think we did all right. Metal's malleable, so we can make these little bitty adjustments, bend here, bend there, bend up, bend down, whatever. But we're gonna be able to get this 100% perfect, and we know that we've got a very, very good starting point and it's no longer super kinked or bent down here. Originally, when we got the bike, the reason I never showed a head-on clip of the bike is because the front fairing was twisted and tilted towards the left side. It was it was pretty bad, but I, again, as a practice bike, um, which this originally started out for before I got the love for it, I didn't care. Uh, I figured I was gonna drop it. I figured Jalen was gonna drop it. I, I figured it was gonna get outrageously wrecked, but it never really got wrecked like that. And this was the biggest accident that this bike has probably had. So with that being said, I think we're looking all right. We're looking way straighter, way truer than we had already had for the bike. We can essentially go back to test. We can get back outside and get to riding. I think we might go back to a throwback track. We'll head back over to Stockton, do all lefts because Dixon is all rights. If you haven't noticed that, there's only two lefts. Stockton is only two rights. You've got all left-handers. And if you could see very clearly, this side of the tire is more worn, it's a little more peaked, and this side is more rounded because we barely use this side of the tire. Stockton is way slipperier, way different surface, but it'll be good to go over there, just get back out there, Stockton, and work on these left-handers, left-hand bends, left-hand turns. I got new brakes done. We could test with the new front brakes that we have on here. Uh, these Again, this feels so good. It's literally butter. It's so buttery. That's one of the main things that we really wanted to change when we were going to the R1. The RCS on the R1, it's almost as if you're pressing your finger in some cake. And that, that feeling that you get, the soaking in and the rebound very slow, this is perfect. I can come into corners and not be apprehensive, and I could just use one finger and nicely apply some braking, give it some pressure, give it more, you know, and it's nice and smooth. It's not like crunchy where your your motion is like it's glitching or you got some lag. So for the R3, it's not as soft and buttery, but it is really nice and smooth. So uh, that should give us a good situation. Plus I was noticing, man, I was coming off of throttle and I couldn't get the older brake reservoir down far enough and I'll show you on this one since it has the same reservoir. This reservoir is so big and bulky, it hits your throttle box. This one being out and about and clear, I'm not hitting anything. This is now down more. This is how you'd look if you're sitting on the bike leaning forward. See, my fingers are down now, not up. I go to grab the brakes and they're up here. See, now they're down here. When you pull them, you're not rolling the throttle. You're just pulling it to yourself. When they're up high and you pull it, you could possibly roll like 5% throttle on. So that could make a weird condition where you'd slam yourself. But now we're nice and clean and we're out so far. So my hands on here, the, see my third finger's clear, fourth finger's clear. You're only using those two at most, and I can just use the one finger because it's out so far. Great upgrade, great addition, and we're going to see how that works out for us. I might throw that Q4 on the front, get a Q5 for the rear, and we should be all right with this bike. This bike might be a killer weapon after that.